I figured I'd take you on a walk. This is where I had a bus stop when I was in uh, grade school and high school. And uh, this is the walk that I would have taken to and from uh, the bus stop in the morning, early. Uh, actually, that's half of a lie. There was one point in time, I think in my sophomore year, I ended up walking to a different bus stop that was about the same distance from my house towards a different direction because there was used to be an area you could cut through to another neighborhood. Uh, since then, somebody bought the house that is on that property and, you know, put up a fence to block the ability to go from neighborhood to neighborhood. So, but this hill here, when I was a little kid, uh, didn't used to be paved, so we were able to sled down it. Not particularly the greatest hill. Uh, the person that lived in that corner house there, who's long since gone, she might not even be alive anymore, God rest her soul. She was an old lady, but she used to call the cops on us for sledding, because um, we were noisy and whatnot. I don't know if it was good or bad that she did it. Uh, we still sled, it didn't stop us. It did push us to eventually find a better hill that was steeper, and it went right into a cross street where we would have kids on the end of that hill um, tell us if traffic was coming. The only problem was is that once you started on this hill, because it was a lot steeper than this here, this isn't even that steep, but once you start going down, you couldn't stop for a car, and you nobody ever got hit by a car, luckily. Um, by, I have no idea. Somebody was looking out for us, um, so nobody got hurt. But, uh, well, nobody got hurt like that. I believe one person got hurt because when they sled down the hill, they went so fast and so far that they went straight into the woods like Sonny Bono. Not, not a funny joke. In fact, well, it's not too soon. Enough time has passed, but it's in bad class to joke about somebody that goes down a hill and hits a tree. Um, but nonetheless, we're, I didn't realize, I'm about halfway back. This wasn't that long of a walk. It's April, maybe 28th, maybe 27th, I don't know, but it's 42 degrees. That's uncalled for. It's darn near May. We're close to summer. If this is in spring, I don't, I don't know what spring is. There's snow on those trees over there. Or maybe it's not snow. It's probably just flowers. But when there's a car coming behind me, I won't get hit. This could be it. This could be the big one where I just go tumbling heels overhead. Uh, it's passing by. <clears throat> and there they go. I probably look really creepy. I've got my Mission Improbable jacket that, that kind of looks, you know, like I'm... It's got a bomb logo on the back. So maybe it looks like a bomb squad person. Probably just thinks I'm a secret agent, especially if they see that it says Agent X in the front. So there we go, and then we walk down, and here is, here's my street sign, it's South Street, I don't know if you can read it, but there it is, South Street, it's a damn traffic jam over here, I can't believe it, how is this possible? Uh, yeah, I used to have a friend that lived, I wouldn't even call him really friends so much as acquaintances, but generally close to the same age. Uh, they were the Zedniks. I remember that. There was a Nick Zednik who was maybe a year, maybe two years younger than me, and then a, I want to say a Liz Zednik. And she was my sister's age, a couple years older. Um, you know, I don't really remember specifically too much about them, uh, except for that they weren't technically our friends. They were just generally the same age. <sighs> so, almost home. Almost home. So this is a quaint little neighborhood. So coming up uh, on the side where there's this greenhouse, that's where a uh, uh -oh, person uh, right there is where Ed and Diane lived. Diane still lives there. She's pretty old. But Ed used to look like 
the colonel for, from Kentucky Fried Chicken. And uh, when I was maybe in eighth grade, uh, it was 4th of July, I'll never forget it. One of those moments in life. It's 4th of July, and he's, he's like, Hey, Jimmy, come on over here. And he talked like that. I don't know why. He's like, come over here. Let me show you something. He used to smoke a big, fat cigar. He brought me to his basement, and he gave me some quarter sticks of dynamite. You don't give an 8th grader quarter sticks of dynamite. But anyways, I lit it when there was a house party at my house. Family members. And everybody was gathered around the fire, and I like put it inside of a tree stump, lit the wick, stood like 10 feet back, and I went, boom! And like my hair flew backwards, my skin rippled, and everything was just ringing in my ears. And when I turned around, I could see the family at the fire, I thought there was like a war zone. People are getting down, they have no idea what's happening. And when my mom, found out that I had been given quarter sticks of dynamite. She had a talking to to Ed. Uh, we still remained friends, like the family and everything. No hard feelings permanently. I mean, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And you can't tell an old dog that he's bad. You can just tell him not to give dynamite to my kids anymore. All right, talk to you later.